Hello and welcome to Surrey Libraries. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Amanda and I work in Guildford and Godalming Libraries and I enjoy walks in the countryside. This year I've been using my walks to bring you some ideas of what to look out for on walks and to inspire you. In January I made a nature diary and also some fat balls to attract birds to your garden. And today I'll be making a bug hotel. So now we've reached the month of February. At this time of year, there's very little bright sunlight. So taking regular walks, even if they're just short walks of 10 or 15 minutes, can really lift your mood. And once you start to look out for things, the walks become so much more enjoyable. I've continued to enjoy the BirdNet app, which records and analyses birdsong. I really like finding out what birds I can hear on my walks. So this year, I've been exploring more of the footpaths around Guildford. Many of the footpaths are very old and well-trodden, and I often think of the people who've walked this way before. The author, Lewis Carroll, who wrote Alice in Wonderland and Alice Through the Looking Glass, had a house in Guildford, and I like to think that he may have walked along these paths when he visited his sisters who lived there. Taking photographs while out of doors is a great way to observe and record what you see. Looking back on your photographs means you can observe the changes that occur over the year. So here I've put some of the photographs from my walk in January. They do look rather dull as light levels are so much lower in January than in the spring and summer. But I look forward to contrasting the photographs I'll be taking later in the year. One of the things I've been doing on my walks is to collect items for my next project. I've been taking an egg box with me. I just pick up small things, so seed heads, fallen cones, um, empty snail shells, fallen leaves, feathers, here are some of the things I've collected, it's also some bark and conkers. It's best to leave the wildflowers and the colourful berries for others to enjoy in these great grey winter months. I've brought my treasures home and I've been inspired to make a bug hotel. So bugs are having a rough time at the moment. Old walls are being knocked down and the cracks and the crevices that the bugs use to shelter are being destroyed. So a bug hotel is really easy to make. It's a great way of recycling and it provides all kinds of creepy crawlies with somewhere to shelter and hide. You'll find that it soon fills up with garden visitors. You might see bees, or ladybirds, lace wings, or wood lice. These in turn are food for the birds in your garden. You might even attract a hedgehog or a toad, and it's a great way to see wildlife up close. So to make your bug hotel, you'll need some old bricks, some roof tiles, if you have them, or some large pieces of broken pots, some short pieces of wood, and you need materials to fill your hotel, uh, like toilet roll inserts, bits of card that you can roll up and put inside your toilet rolls. That makes great space for bugs to settle. So 
some twigs, which you'll need to cut up. Some bamboo canes. These are great because they're hollow inside, so they provide great shelter for insects. Also bits of bark and fir cones. I've also got some old food trays here which will make nice little rooms in the insect hotel. And some very small logs. You can drill holes in these and they make a great place for bugs to hide. Old flower pots are good too, um, different sizes. They provide good shelter. If you've got a big flower pot, um, that's um, really good um, as a shelter for a toad or a hedgehog. And we have seen a toad in our garden, so I'd really like to provide some shelter uh, from predators for, for our toad. To build your bug hotel, first of all, find a quiet and sheltered place in your garden, making sure that the ground is flat. Now, for demonstration purposes, I'm building my bug hotel on a path, um, but I'll be rebuilding it in a sheltered spot in my garden later. So put down two rows of bricks, two or three bricks high, and leave plenty of gaps between the bricks. If you have a curved roof tile or a flower pot, put this between the bricks. It will make a good shelter for toads and frogs. So pack this with straw, dry leaves and grass. On top of this lay three pieces of wood spaced at equal distances across the lines of the bricks. You can make your bug hotel as high as you want, making sure that it's sturdy and stable. You don't want it falling down. So I'm going to make mine two storeys high. So roll up pieces of cardboard to put inside your cardboard tubes and then put the filled tubes inside the hotel. Stack all your other bits and pieces to make little winter rooms for small insects. Put three more pieces of wood on top of your bricks and then put a couple of bricks on the top so that you can lay the tiles at an angle and this helps the rain run off. Then place your tiles or your broken pots on the roof of your hotel. You could also add some gritty soil and sow some wildflower seeds on top to make a green roof. You could make a sign for your hotel by decorating a flat tile or a piece of slate. Write the name of your hotel and decorate with chalks or paint. And there you have your finished bug hotel. Thank you for joining me today. We would love to see the bug hotels that you make please do post your photographs on social media so we can see what you've been doing. Surrey Libraries have lots of books and maps to help you plan your walks and ideas for outdoor activities and crafts. You can order your books through the library catalogue or you can ask library staff who will help you with your book selection. For more craft ideas, follow Surrey Libraries on Facebook and Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you and goodbye.